So House of the Dragon Season 2 has just finished and with huge battles coming in Season 3 I thought it would be fun to make a bunch of the characters and their dragons in Lego. We're going to be making both sides of the Targaryen Civil War including some of the other main houses that join into the conflict. Not only that but we will also be building three of the main dragons with Maelise, Sunfire and Vhagar and eventually adding them into my Battle at Rook's Rest mock project. We've got over 20 minifigures and three dragons to go over in this video so let's get right into it. To start let's make the Queen Who Never Was Rhaenys Targaryen. Rhaenys has been one of my favourite female characters on House of the Dragon, so for my Lego version I've taken some dark red and metallic silver parts which work nicely to show she is armoured ready for battle. For her head and hair I've used this white braided hair piece and a stern and wise facial expression and to finish off Rhaenys I'm going to give her some shoulder armour so she is based on how we see her in episode 4. But now we need to make Rhaenys' dragon the Red Queen. For Maylise, I watched all the footage we have of her and after looking through the over 100 different Lego dragon sets, found this moulded dragon which is a near perfect match. It's from the 2014 castle set Dragon Mountain and obviously it's a little brighter red than the on-screen Maylise but if you're not on a budget there is a darker red version of this dragon from 2007. I was really happy with how they both look together. Also I'm giving away a free copy of this Dragon Mountain set to celebrate the project and I'll be announcing the winner in my final battle a Rook's Rest video around the 1st of September. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and comment down on this video and if that's not enough for you then stick with me for the full details on how you could win a free copy of the new Dungeons and Dragons Red Dragon's Tale. But anyways let's now move on to our next minifigure. Daemon Targaryen is probably my favourite character from the Dance of the Dragons and Matt Smith's performance is an absolute highlight in both seasons so far. So to make him in Lego I experimented with some Red Dragon Knight parts before finding this super detailed version from minifigs.me. The 360 pad printing is really cool, the dragon crests and it's also got scale armour on the torso and legs. It only cost around $12 which was half the price of making a purist version so it was a no-brainer for me. I then added this helmet as it really matches the one that we see Damon using during the joust in season 1 and luckily Lego just released it earlier this year with Basil the Batlord. A big shout out to Goldfire who came up with this helmet hack. For his legendary Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister I added this long sword which does a great job of making Damon look even more deadly but wait until you see Cregan Stark's sword before deciding who has the best weapon. So to go with Damon, I also wanted to make some Targaryen Dragonstone Knights. These guys have basic chainmail bodies and then we're also given some Mordor Orc helmets which do a really nice job of actually capturing dragon wings. These guys don't officially appear in the show but I think they match with Damon's armour really nicely and look pretty fearsome. Now before we get to Sir Kristen Cole, Cregan Stark and some green loyalists, I'd first like to make Helena and Alison. Helena is actually pretty easy to make as we really only see her wearing light green and gold on the show and so these parts from Lord of the Rings King Thranduil work really well. To finish her off I added this white hair piece and this is one of the most accurate purist figures I was able to make. As for Alison, here are some cool purist options but once again this custom version from minifigs.me was the best choice. The green dress has detailed dragon embroidery printed all over along with the braided hair piece and it's just 100% accurate to the Alison Hightower that we see in season 2. Moving on, let's make the sea snake next with Corlys Valerium. Corlys is one of my favourite characters in the books and Steve Tasson has done a great job of bringing him to life in live action. So for my Lego version I've taken some sand blue Harry Potter parts. For his head and hair I've used this piece from Saruman, another Lord of the Rings minifigure which looks great. The beard is a little long and if you'd prefer a printed beard you could try out Bodice and Brick's version of Corlys which uses a different hair piece. But to finish my Corlys off I added this two-handed axe which is based off what he uses in season one when fighting against the Triarchy in the Stepstones. Now the only character who I might like more than Damon so far is Cregan Stark. I'm really excited to see more of him in season three and we know his long beards will be appearing to join the Blacks in some battles. So let's make them next. For Cregan I've given him some dark brown leather armour along with a fur lined pauldron and a brown cape. I've also given him this hairpiece from Qui-Gon Jinn and a strong stone face print for his legendary sword ice I found this insane custom two-handed greatsword which matches almost perfectly and he might be my favorite minifigure overall but to go along with Cregan I've made some stark grey beards to back up the blacks so for these guys I simply added the hairpiece and beard from Gandalf the Grey to the same torso and legs as Cregan I've even built some variations like spearmen and archers but I'm waiting on a parts order for more beards to finish them off with that said these guys look absolutely epic and are probably the 
the coolest army that I was able to create for this project. Next up, we have Jace, and he is actually one of the trickier minifigures to make. In season two, we just see him wearing dark red or black robes with a large dragon crest on the chest. I did experiment with a couple of different torsos before coming up with this mixture of parts, and I've also given him a pauldron and cape as we often see him wearing that. And then to back Jace up and also support the Dragonstone Knights I made earlier, I built four different variations of black dragon knights with spearmen, archers, and swords, which make up the bulk of the Black's army with 12 of these guys. And honestly, it was really nice to bring some classic Lego castle figures into this, and the red dragon print on the chest is absolutely perfect. Okay, now we should make Rhaenyra who I decided would be another pad printed custom minifigure and this version does not disappoint with the long flowing black robes and the white bun hairpiece. We'll be seeing that hairpiece again on a certain dragon seed later in this video but in white it works really well for Queen Rhaenyra and although I do prefer official Lego minifigures when custom versions have this kind of accuracy it's hard not to choose them instead. Next up to give the greens some firepower let's build King Aegon Targaryen and his dragon Sunfire. Now the reason I ended up getting any pad printed figures at all was really for the dragon print on Aegon. The dark green colorway looks perfect and I think it does a brilliant job of capturing how we see him in season two before the battle at Rook's Rest. But what's special about this minifigure is that it has a dual molded face print which allows you to turn it into Aegon after the battle of Rook's Rest when he's been all burnt up by Dragonfire. And speaking of Dragonfire, let's build our next dragon with Sunfire. Sunfire is one of my favorite dragons and in the books his scales are said to shine gold in the sun, hence his name. But something I really wanted to capture was the different shape, size, and colors that we see on House of the Dragon. And so I ended up going for the 2019 Hungarian Horntail. Obviously it's brown and tan colored, which isn't entirely accurate, but apart from that, it's perfect for what I need. And when we add Aegon onto Sunfire and compare them to Rhaenys and Maylise, I think it's a very accurate representation of their size matchup. As for Larys Strong, for him, I used an old Prince of Persia Nizam mini figure and simply added on a hairpiece from Sirius Black. And then by just adding a cane on, I think he looks pretty accurate to how we see him sneaking around. So now let's make possibly the most hated House of the Dragon character, Sir Kristen Cole. Although he is a very questionable dude, in season two we saw a more poetic and broken Kristen. So to make him, I've used parts from a Kingsguard in the original Game of Thrones series and then added this floppy curtains hairpiece. I also built two more custom Kingsguard minifigures to go alongside him and they are all finished with white cloaks that Kingsguard wear as part of their uniform and they also have these really cool molded helmets. Moving on to more of the greens now with Otto Hightower. The actor Reese Ifans almost stole the show in season one and it was really disappointing to see him banished for season two. For him, I've used mostly parts from Salazar Slytherin with the dark green and black robe printing. This dark brown Widow's Peak hairpiece worked really well to finish him off, although I would have preferred to use his longer version in a dark tan colorway. Next up, a new character I've been enjoying in season two is Gawain Hightower. So to make him, I use this mixture of green castle knight parts, which are actually super accurate to how we see him, right down to the neck armor, which is also called a gorgette. For the head and hair, I chose this stern expression and slightly reddish hairpiece. And again, I was really happy with how he turned out. To bulk out the Hightower forces, I also built these green Hightower loyalists. I wanted to find shields that actually had a tower on them, but the closest I could find was this metallic crown print, which I think does a great job. And against the green torsos looks really nice and goes along with Commander Gawain Hightower. I also have an Easter egg coming up with a special fourth dragon and a character we haven't seen yet who will join this Hightower army in season three. But onto our next set of figures now with Baylor and Reyna Targaryen. Although they haven't played a huge role in the show yet, we have seen Baylor in action on her Dragon Moon Dancer. So to make her in Lego, I've actually used parts from Luminara Unduli, the Jedi Master, and then added this curly white hairpiece to finish her off. And I was really happy with how the Luminara parts turned out. As for Reyna, I've used these parts from Elrond and then added a white hairpiece from the recent Aristocrat in the CNF series. We haven't seen it just yet, but Reyna will be bonding with the Wild Dragon Sheep Stealer in season three, meaning both sisters will be fully fledged dragon riders the next time that we see them. The last of the main characters here are the antagonists of season two, Aemon Targaryen and his dragon Vhagar. Aemon is another character that I've really enjoyed. Ewan Mitchell does an inspired job of playing the character and I also really enjoyed his performance in The Last Kingdom as a warrior monk. But for his minifigure, I chose the custom pad printed version which has his black leather robes and also his eye patch 
Like his brother, he has a dual face print, so he can also have his gruesome scarred face print on show. But Aemon would be nothing without the mighty Vagar. On screen, Vagar is dark green and has a very dinosaur-like face, but the most important thing about her is that she is the biggest dragon in the entire series. And so while I wanted to capture the dark green, I ended up prioritizing the size and choosing a Ninjago set called the Fire Dragon Attack to represent Vagar. Obviously, the red is totally inaccurate, but when you compare it to Mei Li's and Sunfire, the scale is pretty cool. And if you can't get past the color, then this could always double up for Caraxes, for Daemon, or another of the more red colored dragons. And if you want to see how this was the number one out of all of those 100 dragons I looked at, then check out my Evolution of Dragons video next. Now, if you're watching this video, you are probably a big fan of dragons, which is why today's sponsor, The Brick News, is giving away a free copy of the Dungeons & Dragons Red Dragon's Tale. Entry is open until the end of August, and the full details are up on the screen now. You can enter for yourself down at the links in the description, and it helps support me here at the channel. Now, for our bonus characters, I have made the three dragon seeds. First up, we have Hugh the Hammer, and to make him, I've used a simple brown printed blacksmith torso, along with this long tan hairpiece. And it's really accurate to how we see him when he claims Vermithor. And then we also see him beat up a random peasant to steal a single carrot, so I included that as a little extra detail. For Ulf the White, we mostly see him drinking in taverns before he literally stumbles into claiming Silverwing. I used the Kai Adi Mundi torso from Lego Star Wars, which actually worked really well for a medieval peasant. And he also has a torch so he can find his way to his dragon. Last up of the dragon seeds is Adam of Hull, the illegitimate son of Corlys Valerian. For Adam, I gave him the sand blue Kenobi torso, which has been reversed to hide the skin printing. He also has simple brown legs, and then this black braided hairpiece. And overall, I was really happy with how these three dragon seeds turned out. But our final dragon is actually the young blue dragon Tessarion, who we've only seen very briefly so far in season two. She is ridden by Alicent's youngest son, Daron Targaryen, and is probably the most epic smaller dragon we see. To make Daron, I used this green dragon like torso with some brown and gold armor, and I finished him off by adding this white movie star hairstyle, which I think works really well for a younger Targaryen. As for Tessarion, I was pretty sneaky here, and I used the recent young dragon Ryu set to create her. Tessarion is a young dragon on the show, only recently able to fly, and so the overall size and color of young Ryu is almost perfect for her. Unfortunately, Ninjago's design for Ryo's face has this weird chunky dinosaur headpiece, which isn't very accurate. But I was pretty proud of how these two turned out. So because I wanted to be able to use these minifigures to build future battles from House of the Dragon, I've also created some extra characters here. And first up, we have Tyland Lannister. Now I've wanted to get some of these custom Lannister soldiers for a while now, so this project was the perfect excuse. And we actually see Tyland in full armor with his Lannister army in season two. So to make him, I simply gave him a stubbly reddish beard and a wrinkled face along with an open face Lannister helmet. To back Thailand up, we also have around nine Lannisters with spearmen, swordsmen, and archers. And along with the Lannister forces, I built some Bolton soldiers, including these cool bannermen with the flayed crest printed on. And I also built some Baratheon soldiers in case we see Boris Baratheon and the Men of Storm's End alongside the Greens in season three. And even though it's not releasing until 2026, I'm just really excited for those big battles coming in season three. And I really hope you guys all enjoyed this video and me nerding out over a song of ice and fire. I make a ton of Lego content here on the channel, from Star Wars and Lord of the Rings to Lego Castle and army building. And so if that's your thing, make sure to subscribe and let me know down in the comments who your favorite minifigure was, but I'll see you guys next time.